Hello everyone, my name is Chris Kim, and in this video, we're going to talk about working with box storage using PyTeal. Now, if you watch the global and local states PyTeal video, you'll know that there are three types of states for Algorand smart contracts. Global state, local state, and box storage. Today, we're going to talk about box storage. Box storage was added as a new type of state for Algorand smart contract around November 2022. Before box storage, you can only store 64 key value pairs with a total of 8 kilobytes of memory with global state and 16 key value pairs with a total of 2 kilobytes of memory for local state. I know that's a lot of numbers, but all I'm trying to say is that before box storage, there's limited amount of storage you could work with when you're writing algorithm smart contracts. Now this limitation caused a lot of frustrations for developers who are building applications that needed to store a lot of data on chain. Well, now with box storage, you can essentially create infinite amount of box storage on demand. This will free up a lot of the limitations that came with only global and local states and empower developers to build complex and powerful applications on the algorithm blockchain. Now, before you go all crazy with box storage, this doesn't mean you should make everything into a box and pile up unused data on chain. This is because storage on the blockchain is expensive and every byte of data is stored on thousands of computers that are maintaining the algorithm blockchain. So if you want to store a lot of data on chain using box storage, you have to pay up. Everything that takes up space on the algorithm blockchain has to pay for storage. Creating an account takes up space. Creating a token takes up space. And creating boxes takes up space. This is why Algorand has something called the minimum balance requirement, or in short, MBR. So let's say you create an algorithm smart contract called contract A, and you create two boxes in it. Now as a creator of contract A, your MBR goes up for creating a smart contract. But for the two boxes created in contract A, the smart contract has to pay the minimum balance for those boxes. So as the number of boxes grow, the MBR for contract A will grow as well. And to elaborate on that, Every algorithm smart contract also has an associated application account that can receive and send the algos. So to be precise, the MBR for contract A's application account goes up. Now I won't go into the math of how to calculate MBR for creating a box, but I'll leave a link in the description that will take you to the developer portal where it talks about how to calculate your MBR for boxes. Now there's one big disclaimer, so listen carefully. If you delete an application without deleting all of the outstanding boxes that are in the smart contract, all of the MBR for those boxes will be permanently lost. So it's highly recommended you delete all the boxes and withdraw all the funds in the app account before you delete your smart contract. Now let's dive into the code demo to see how you can use PyTeal to manipulate box storage. All right, let's look at this smart contract called Basic Box Manipulations. This smart contract has all of the box manipulation PyTeal methods. So let's go through each one and see what you can do. So I have a router set up here and it's just defining what happens during creation. And I'm just using the default value for the rest of the uncomplete actions. All right, let's come down here and look at two different ways to create a box. Now the first method is to use the box create PyTeal method. Box create takes in two arguments, the name of the box and the size of the box. So as a second parameter, we're passing in int 9. So this box will have a size of 9 bytes. After executing this call, if it's successful, it returns 1 if there was no box with the same name, and it returns 0 if the box already exists. So here, by asserting this box creation using box create method, we're actually checking if a box with the same name that's passed in as the argument already exists on the smart contract. You want to use the box create method if you know what the size of the box should be before creating the box. Because once you set the size of the box when you create the box with box create, that size cannot change. So this box with this box create method will always have a size of 9 bytes. Now let's look at the second method of creating a box and that's to use the box put method. Now if you don't already have the box with the same name on the smart contract, this box put method will actually create a new box with that name that includes the value that you pass in. So here, the create box with put method takes in two arguments, box name and box value. And then we call the box put method. For the first argument, we're passing in the box name argument that we pass in. And for the second argument, we're passing in the box value argument. 
This is great because you don't have to predefine what the size of the box will be. Boxput will automatically calculate the size of the value that you're passing in and create a box with that exact size. So you want to use box put when you need to create a box and you know what value that you want to pass in, but you don't exactly want to calculate what the byte size is of the value that you pass in. And moving on to writing to a box. Now there are two different ways to write to an existing box. One is to use the box replace method. Box replace takes in three arguments, the name of the box as the first argument, the index of where you want to start replacing the byte, and the value that you want to replace with as the third argument. So what this line of code is saying, hey, for the box with this box name, I want to replace the byte value starting from the zero index with this new name value that I'm passing in. So with box replace, you can partially change the byte value that is stored in the box. Now the second way to write to a box is to use the box put method again. Now I said that when there isn't a box with the same name, box put creates a new box. But if you use box put and pass in a box name that already exists, you're not creating a new box, but you're actually updating the value that's written in that box. So this write box method is taking in two arguments, box name and new name. And as a first argument for box put method, we're passing in the name of the box. And the second argument is a new value that I want to replace with the old value that is stored in the box. Now there is one big limitation with this box put method. And that limitation is when you're updating the value of the box with the new value, that new value must have the same byte length as the old value. If you try to update the box with box put where the new value has a different byte length, the transaction will fail. And moving on to reading contents of the box. There are two different ways to read from a box. The first way is to use the box extract method. Box extract takes in three arguments. The box name as the first argument, and the start and the end index of the byte array that you want to read from. Box extract is great if you want to just read a certain length of the byte that is stored in the box. Now another way to read from a box is to use the box get method. And this box get method only takes in one argument, which is the name of the box that you want to read from. Now this box get method returns a maybe value, and that maybe value holds two things. One, a Boolean value indicating if the box exists and the content of the box. So when we use box get to read from a box with this box name argument, we're assigning that to the contents variable and we're asserting that this box exists by doing assert contents.has value. Now if this is true, then it will move on and we will set the output to the content of the box by doing contents.value. So box get is great if you need to read the full content of the box. Next, to delete the box. To delete a box, you use the box delete method. It takes in one argument, the name of the box. And just like box create, box delete returns one if the box existed and zero if box didn't exist. So by doing assert app.boxdelete with box name.get, that's saying, hey, I want to delete the box with this box name, but make sure that box exists. If the box doesn't exist, this assertion will fail and the transaction will fail as well. Now there's one more method that returns the length of the box. And that method is called box length. This takes in one argument, the name of the box, and this returns a maybe value with the Boolean value, indicating whether the box exists or not, and the length of the box. So these are all of the PyTeal methods that you can use to manipulate a box. We have two different ways to create a box. We have two different ways to write to a box, two different ways to read from a box, a way to delete a box, and a way to get the box size. Now let's build this smart contract, head over to that flow, and interact with this smart contract to see these methods in action. I'm gonna open up my terminal and run that Python file. By doing that, if you open up the terminal, that will write out the artifacts into this artifacts folder. And you can see the two teal programs and the contract.json ABI file written out. Now let's head over to that flow and deploy and call this smart contract. And once you're in that flow, make sure your sandbox local net is running. 
in the background and your Dapplo is connected to your Sandbox network. Go to Dev Wallet and create a wallet if you don't have a wallet set up yet. Click Connect Wallet and click Dev Wallet to connect your development wallet. Now head over to ABI Studio, click Import ABI, click Upload File, go to your project folder, go into Artifacts, and import in this contract.json file. All right, now let's create this application by clicking Create App, importing the approval program. And you can find the approval program in the Artifacts folder, import in the Clear program. And because we're just using box storage in this smart contract, we're not using any of the global or local storages. So let's just click Create. Great, so our application is created. Now let's try calling these methods and see what you can do with them, what the limitations are, and how you would interact with box storages using these methods. Now remember I said that if the smart contract want to have box storage, the smart contract's minimum balance requirement goes up per box. So the smart contract needs to hold some algos. With that flow, it's really easy to fund your smart contract. All you need to do is to click on this faucet icon to dispense some algos into your smart contract. If you click view transaction, you can see that we sent 100 algos to the smart contract that we created. Now let's go back. Now let's first try creating a box using the box create method. And for that, we want to execute the create box method. And let's create a box with the name box A. Now when you're working with boxes, you need to include the references to the box when you're calling your application. In that flow, you can do that by opening up the Boxes tab, include the application ID, you can find it over here on the top right, and the name of your box that you want to interact with. And because we're trying to create the box with the name Box A, you want to pass in Box A here. Now click the plus button to include it in the reference array of your application call, and click Execute. Now that just created a box with name Box A, and that has a size of nine bytes because we use the box create method where we specify that this box will have a size of nine bytes. Now let's try reading from this box A. Let's use the get box method, which is using the box get method to get the content of box A. So box name is box A. And again, we need to pass in the references. So pass in the app ID and the name of your box add it to your reference and click execute. And you can see the return value is empty because we haven't put anything in box A yet. Now let's use get box size to see if box A has size of nine, which is what we specified when we used the box create method. So again, box A, add the box reference, 277, box A, add it, execute. So you can see it returned nine, which is exactly what we expected. Now let's try writing to this box. And let's use the write box method to do that. Write box method is using the box put PyTL method. The box name is box A. And for the content of the box, let's write Christopher Kim. So I wanna store multiple names in all of these boxes. Again, let's pass in the box reference. 277, box A, add it and execute. But you can see that it fails. And if you look at the error message, we're getting a logic eval error saying attempt to box put wrong size nine. So if you remember, box A has a size of nine bytes. But as you can see, Christopher Kim way exceeds nine bytes. And that's why this is failing. Okay, so we need to pass in a name with nine bytes. So I want to pass in Chris Kim. Now there are eight letters and there's a space in between. So that will add up to nine bytes. And if I click execute, now you can see that the transaction goes through. All right, let's call the get box method again to see if our name got properly stored. So box A and the references execute. Now you can see that box A is holding the value Chris Kim. Now let's call the extract box method to only read my first name. To do that, you need to pass in the box name and the start index will be zero because my name is Chris Kim and Chris starts from the zero index. 
and the end index will be 5 because Chris is 5 letters. Again, passing the box reference and execute it. And you can see it returned Chris, just like we expected. Now let's say I want to change my first name. Uh, let's say I want to change it to Brian. To do that, we want to use the replace box method. Replace box is using the box replace PyTL method. So we want to change the content of box A. And for my first name, I want to change it to Brian. Pass in the box reference plus and execute. Now that transaction was successful. So if we read the box again using get box, you can see that my name is changed to Brian Kim. Now let's try creating another box called box B with the create box with put method. So this is going to create a new box using the box put PyTL method. So let's create a box named B. Now for the value of box B, I want to pass in Bob. Again, let's pass in the box reference, box B plus and execute. Now that just created a new box called box B with the content being Bob. So let's try reading from this box. Use get box, box B, the references, and execute. You can see that the content of the box B is Bob. Now I said that when you use box put to create a box, the size of the box is automatically calculated based on the value that you pass in as the content. So let's try checking the size of box B by calling get box size. So we want to check the size of box B, 277 box B. And if I click execute, you can see that it returned three because we passed in Bob, which is three bytes. Now let's try deleting box B. You can do that by calling the delete box method. I'm going to delete box B, pass in the reference, execute. That transaction was successful. And now if I try reading from box B, you can see that it returns an error because box B doesn't exist anymore. So that's how you use these eight different box manipulation PyTL methods to create a box, to read from a box, to write into a box, to delete a box, and to get the box size. Today we learned what box storage is and how you can manipulate boxes using PyTeal. Now there's a lot of information I couldn't include in this video without making this video an hour long. So make sure you head to the developer portal and read up on boxes before you start using them in your application. I'll also leave a link in the description to an article that explains everything that you need to know about boxes. As always, if you have any questions, head to the Algorand Discord channel and get help from our developer relations team or our amazing Algorand developer community. Also, if you like what you saw today, please like and subscribe this channel so that we can help more aspiring Algorand developers. That being said, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.